Good afternoon everybody. So we've had the conversion kit on our Dodge here for about a year now and we want to figure we figure we want to go over and give you a review on this kind of tell you our thoughts. So we have a 94 Dodge Ram that had the unit bearings on the front and full time you know there was no hubs nothing to lock in or out. The unit bearings are starting to go bad so we ended up putting in a Yukon gear axle and gear I think Yukon axle and gear I think is the company name we'll put a link down below as well as the product you know link to the products we ended up putting the Yukon conversion kit on this Dodge and uh, we just wanted to go over it and give you our thoughts we've had it for about a year now I don't think we really saw any fuel mileage increase but we don't run long distances we did run the hubs unlocked all summer long the installation was really straightforward the one thing i will say is the installation instructions are for a gen 3 it seems like and there's a couple things you have to figure out on your own for the gen 2 front end i did not call them um, i was able to sort that out myself on the way through so i can't tell you what their tech support's like but i assume it would be top notch um, the lockout hubs we went with the yukon hubs basically they turn about a quarter of a turn from lock to unlock it comes with the new, the whole new hub for the hub to go into, lockout hub to go into. Come with the wheel studs, new wheel bearings, and a whole new spindle that goes in the back here. Everything, a uh, new stub axle that comes out. So pretty much everything from the ball joints out except for the steering knuckle and the brake rotor. On a Gen 2, the brake rotor goes on the back side and the studs press through. So at the same time, we did that we put on new brake rotors we figured they were fairly inexpensive compared to the overall cost of the conversion kit so we put brake rotors on we did end up going through the whole brake system putting all new calipers pads shoes wheel cylinders master cylinder lines and all new stainless steel line kit we put on um, the stainless steel line kit we'll leave a link that down below as well it was claimed it fit a 94 to 98, 99, whatever year Dodge. I will tell you that the 94, the ABS control for the rear brakes is up on the master cylinder instead of down here on the frame. So there's a couple lines that do not actually fit. They do not say anything about that. We ended up having to flare a few lines ourselves and make that work. But other than that, we're really happy with the kit. Um, the instructions are a little vague. I came with some extra tubing for a long bed or a two-wheel drive, I believe it was. So there was a little bit of thinking to do, you know, kind of try to make it fit. Um, the other thing we did with the Yukon conversion kit is we deleted the CAD system. We'll, uh, we'll go ahead and put the vehicle up in the air a little bit more and take you around and show you that, as well as one of the problems we've had and what we think we're going to do to fix that. So hold on a minute while we get this up in the air a few more feet and we'll get you underneath so you can take a look a little closer. All right, so those of you familiar with the second gen Dodge, there's a vacuum canister here that locks the axle in and out to make the four wheel drive work and tells the four wheel drive light to come on. That's another issue we'll talk about in a second. We had problems with this uh, two winters ago plowing. It kept kicking out, we kept going into two wheel drive. We ended up taking a spare CAD actuator from a friend. We lost the snap ring in here. We had to weld some stuff together. We finally got it to work, but our axles were a little worn and it would still kick out every now and then in a hard spot. So we decided to go ahead and buy the inner axle as well from Yukon. So there is no more split in here. It's one solid axle all the way right out to the yoke right here. So on this side, both axles are brand new. On the driver's side, only the outer axle is brand new. You do have to put a seal inside the housing here when you make this conversion because on the second gen Dodge, the seal is actually out here. Well, it's actually right in here. And the vent for the front end is right here. So you move your seal inboard, they give you the seal, and then you have to vent the front end, which is one of the problems we've had. They told us to not drill our hole for the vent near the ring gear or right over the ring gear because it would spit you know, oil up onto that. So we actually drilled it Let's see if you can see it. We drilled it over here. The ring gear is over here. And we still get gear oil coming out the vent when we run long distances in with the hubs locked in. So I think the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try to get rid of that bend and run the vent hose up a lot farther. And if that doesn't work, we're probably going to move the vent hole somewhere. or We'll probably call them actually first. 
and see what their opinion is because they don't actually tell you that in the book which it seems like in the instructions that would be a handy thing to tell you where to drill that hole the second issue we had and i have not called them to check into this yet and i should um, is your four-wheel drive light will no longer work because the four-wheel drive light used to plug into this actuator and now there's nothing there to actuate the transfer case that's in this is also used in some GM product and Ford product. So I know that we can probably go to the, the auto parts store and get a switch that goes on the top of the transfer case that would be electrical. In this particular case, it's a vacuum switch. So when you put it in full drive, it changes the way the vacuum goes. Vacuum comes down to move this fork back and forth. I'm pretty sure we could probably go get a sensor for that transfer case out of like a General Motors product screw it in this transfer case and then just extend our wires back there and hook it up so that's something we'll do uh, later on probably next spring is we'll go ahead and we'll fix the vent and we'll fix the full drive indicator we'll call yukon first to see what they have to say but that's kind of the overall installation process of it it took us probably i'm gonna say the better half of a day to install that kit our Unit bearings are probably the toughest thing there is to it, getting those unit bearings out. Uh, this particular truck, they've been changed a couple times, so they were never seized and they came out really nicely. Um, if you have that issue, you know, go look on YouTube. We'll try to find a couple videos and leave a link to them. But there's a few tricks you can use to get those unit bearings out if they are frozen there. So overall, this conversion kit, we're real happy with it. It stops everything from spinning all summer long, so we're not having to use full drive. The other neat thing is because we haul some big trailers with this and it is a standard transmission, we can now put it in low range with the hubs locked out and have low range two wheel drive for backing up trailers. So we're not riding the clutch, you know, or having to go too fast backing up. So, you know, in a nutshell, we're really happy with it. It uses real inexpensive bearings, standard bearings. We can go right up to the auto parts store and buy cheap. We can repack them at any time. They're just a tapered roller bearing. Um, you can make this conversion yourself by buying parts of a Ford, parts of a Dodge, parts of a Chevy, and drilling a few holes. Uh, there were some videos on that on YouTube. We opted to go this way just because we didn't have access to all the pieces and parts we needed and we felt the time we went and found all those and then tried to make it work, you know, it wouldn't save us any money. And this keeps the wheel spacing exactly the same as well. So that's kind of our, our one year mark review on the Yukon conversion kit for this Dodge. So we'd do it again if we had to do it again. Any questions, leave them down below. We'll try to help you. Anything you'd like to see about it that we didn't show here, let us know and we'll show that. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.